All right. True Footy Podcast 23. I feel like you're taller than me. How's this? How's this working? I'm not, not cool with that. Not true. Um, welcome back, boys. We've, uh, we've gone full circle, as I mentioned in the last podcast. One year of True Footy. Well, I got no. the LinkedIn notification. Actually, yeah, yeah I had, yeah, I had I on my LinkedIn that. and it's like, yeah, a few oh. people liked it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like there one you go. year at True Footy Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Literally our first ever podcast, us three boys with um, over in Brentwood wrapping the last trade period. Mm. And uh, here we are. Who would have thought it? Wow. 12 months later. What was the big move from last year's trade period? German impede of Hawthorne. <laughs> no. Um, There's something bigger than that. Oh, I remember Essendon were pretty proactive getting Devin Smith, Jake Stringer, yeah. and yeah. Uh, Port got all those spuds and Rockley. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Frio got two for Weller. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's basically the same as this year, Gold Coast getting bent over effectively. This year yeah. seems definitely the biggest trade period in terms of high-profile players moving clubs, doesn't it? And yeah. even number of trades as well, I think, mm. across the board. So biggest the trade period. It's exciting to be a right. fan. I feel like a lot more than it was 10 years ago when five players would move. But yeah. I mean, that was back in the day when all the trades happening would be player for player trades. Yeah. Uh, pretty much everything now, well, majority of it is player for picks. True. Um, but you still do get player for player trades, but they're, I, I mean, mean, it's a little bit different. Yeah. You can get pick for pick trades now as well. That was actually not yeah. allowed back in the day. Yeah. But. Yeah, interesting. I guess free agency has definitely changed the way mm. that players move around the AFL. Yeah, and it, it seems like now players are tradable when they've still got a year left of their contract. Yeah. It's kind of like EPL yeah. in that sense where they want to yeah. sell high because the player's probably going to move. Not necessarily a good thing. Probably makes yeah. contracts less less yeah. meaningful. Mm. Yeah. There are people saying contracts aren't worth the paper they're written on in the AFL these days. And- it's not entirely unfair. Yeah. I, I think they do mean a lot in that it determines how much you can get, you pay for someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Apply, or like you would have got more lock, for Locking Neal at Fremantle if he had this two, year. Three years, if though. he was out of yeah, if he's out of contract completely, we probably would have had to settle for yeah. five, maybe. I don't yeah. know, conjecture, but you get my point. Um, well, we would have copped a compo pick if it would, to be a free agent by then. I'm guessing. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah true. We'd have just copped our pick seven or whatever it would have been. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's interesting as well. That pick six that we started the trade period with went full circle. It went to it Port Adelaide, went to Brizzy, came back to us, and then we shipped it to Melbourne, who shipped it to the Gold Coast. Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. And they could still trade that to a port, like a South Australian club, yeah. maybe. We'll see. But, um, yeah. Well, before we get too far into the podcast, boys, I want to um, just do a little bit of an announcement about a new uh, a community that we have going on, uh, an app called Discord now. So uh, for those who don't have it, you can, you can use it on the desktop as well, can't you? It's not just yeah, an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, it's don't. pretty good though. I like the yeah, app. yeah. So it's if you don't, it's usually for, um, I think, like gamers and stuff. And a friend of ours, Greg, helped us set it up. And um, basically, it's just a community where you can talk footy with us. And uh, if you join it, you can also put in your suggestions for um, the podcast and any questions. Um, so and it's not even just talk with us. There's all sorts of people in there that... Of just chatting to each other about footy, it's been really good. I was jumping in a bit during the trade discussion period. True footy is true footy is smart yeah. ass remarks. <laughs> Definitely a big shout out to Greg um, for coming up with the idea and um, yeah, yeah, writing in to tell us how he thinks we could improve the show. Yeah, um, that's yeah, really really cool of him, and yeah, we'd love people to keep doing that. Exactly. Um, so we'll put the Discord link in uh, the top comment. I'll pin it so that if anyone wants to join, feel free. And I think the way we'll start this podcast today properly is by actually going through some of the questions the boys had for us on the Discord yeah, cool. app. So, um, yeah, so, all right. We had Chris um, come up with a question for you, Bush. He said, well, he phrased it as, what do we, what we really want from a rant... Uh, sorry, what do we really want is um, Busher to go on a rant about Fremantle having the best trade period. So, Well, um, objectively, we probably did, <laughs> I'd say. And I did say to Chris that I was definitely going to refer to Peter Bell as a wizard, so I'm going to get that out of the way now. <laughs> Peter Bell is a wizard. He's done very well. Mm. The fact that we've improved our draft hand, Hogan and Lobb, I'd say we've done bloody well, considering Neil wanted out as well. So we've maximised that and got a pretty good haul in return. Yeah, I think considering you probably... W- Keeping Neil wasn't a realistic option. Like I know you yeah. have, obviously had the choice, but it wasn't going to be ideal. He he seemed like he really wanted to make the move. And players, when they make their mind up, they're like, "Oh, yeah. I'm happy to stay." And then they actually really want to move. So yeah, they just um, toe in the public line to yeah. sort of 
not burn too many bridges sort of thing. So what, what's the biggest benefit to Fremantle out of this, this trade period? We've finally got someone we can kick it to in the forward 50. Well, two now. We've got two people we can actually kick to in the forward 50, which is something we've lacked since Pav, and even then Pav was on his last legs. And Even in, like, literally the first seven rounds of the season when Tabner was healthy and confident, we looked like a different team. Mm. Imagine someone who's ten times better in Hogan and Lobb. Yeah. It's going to help a lot. Exactly. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts, Joyce? Uh, yeah, pretty happy. Pretty happy. Um, I remember... I was I was a bit hesitant um, last week. I remember saying on on the group chat um, that I I do worry about the number of um, injured players Fremantle have. Um, in terms of a, we seem to have a lot of talent that doesn't play full seasons. I feel like best twenty two on the park. We'd be a very very good team to be honest, but um, it's just it just never. It's never, never going to happen that Benel, Hogan, Fife, you know what I mean, I don't are going to be Benel. on the same, are going to be on the same field at, at one time. But on the last day of trade period, for some reason at about ten a.m., I just kind of dropped all that, and I was like, "Nah, we have to do whatever we have to to get Hogan." Yeah, changed my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I went a bit cool on him, and then um, I got keen on him again. But I mean. For a while, it looked like uh, it could be Neil leaving and getting no no players in except for um, Conker, because um, I mean the Lob deal was taking a while to come through. Um, the Hogan deal, GWS by all did reports, all right in that deal I think two first. Yeah, mm. by all reports, the um, Hogan deal was had fully stopped. Um, so for a while, it looked like we were going to lose Neil get a couple of picks and that's it so I think would have been a pretty bad result for a yeah, team that's have. meant to be trying to push yeah. up the ladder but we'd be in the same sentence as Gold Coast effectively because that's what's happened with Gold Coast they've lost they've got except a lot worse obviously they've lost both their captains and all they've gotten in returns compo pick and probably yeah. could have got a better pick next year if they let May walk then I fully intend to roast Gold Coast a little bit later in this podcast so um, just one more point on Fremantle um, we, we know what Hogan and Lobb bring to the side. What are your thoughts on the specific recruitments, recruitments of Conker and Travis Collier from Essendon? I think Collier is not a bad recruit. Probably needed a bit of speed up, up the ground, half forward, 27, so still probably got a good three or four years in him. Mm. So for a future fourth, I'm more than happy to have a crack at that one. The Conker one... Uh, Gave up I mean, for Conker, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, I I don't personally. I don't rate him as a player, Um, and yeah, can't. It's pretty hypocritical or biased to just change my mind now that he's come to Frio. So I'll stick by my guns. I don't think he's that good, but I hope to be proven wrong. Yeah, he's a guy where I I put. I don't haven't seen enough of him to have a real informed opinion on him. Like, so realistically, way I look at him, worst case scenario, it's a bit mature depth that will push Blakely, Cherry, and Brayshaw to step up. Take those roles. Yep. There does seem to be a little of a gap for Fremantle in that mid um, mid range, well middle, like middle age. The back lack of a good word. Mature mm. age midfielders, I guess, around Lockie Neal's age, so twenty five. Yeah. You yeah. obviously got Fife at the pointy end. Um, obviously, arguably the best midfielder in the competition. And then there's a bit of a oh, you got Monday as well, another veteran. Then there's a gap. You've obviously got Brayshaw and Chera, obvious talents. Yeah. Um, but maybe Blakely. maybe Conquer and yeah inside Blakely. mids. I th- I think yeah. outside we're alright still got Stephen Hill still got Brad Hill Ed Langdon's pretty handy but I think inside midfield now that, that um, Neil's gone Blakely Blakely has to go in there and I think he'll do a good job Ross said he will he was the first name Ross said when Neil's gone was Blakely you're obsessed aren't you? I loved it Blakely's my favourite <laughs> docker everyone knows that Brayshaw but I think Bra- there's a little bit of pressure on Brayshaw and Chera to grow up quick as well hmm. it helps having two of them they can kind of at least share minutes you know what I mean yeah. rather than yeah, well, it, and Monday think, will have to be a full time mid again, probably for this you season. Think? Probably this I season. I think they'll just I do whatever too old. is suitable for his body. He, yeah, he was our best player the last half of the season. I'd yeah, but that's so more of a uh, that's not a good sign. I don't feel like. <laughs> yeah, but I meant he can still play in there full time while he can. On I don't think he can play there full time personally. Like he'd still obviously go to the bench and rest, and she's not going to be in there. Like, I still think he's a swap between forward and mid 
personally. Mm. I think you'll be playing more mid than forward, though. Do you? Yeah. With Neil gone. Yeah. Rayshaw's coming back off an injury, even though he'll be fine come round one. Banfield might play. A bit Banfield more. will play some more. Like, normal um, offensive mid rather than just... He's more of a tagger, wasn't he, in his first season? Yeah. But obviously he's physically ready to play AFL um, yeah. as a midfielder. Um, so he's another option. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, Blakely... Um, Blakely's the big one. He'll be the number two mid now. Yeah. For sure. Gross. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the next question. Um, Aussie Palace, the username, uh, has, has got a few questions for us, actually. He, he said, we'll start off, he wants a, um, a cheeky ladder prediction for Fremantle and West Coast next year. Um, start with you, Joycey. Just fire from the hip. Boom. Uh, West Coast... First, Frio, 12th. Hmm. Busher. West Coast, can I say podium, one, two, or three? Is that a bit of a cop-out? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that's a weird a expression for yeah. football, but... <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm a <laughs> there is no adapted podium. expression, but yeah, I'll say yeah. podium finish for West Coast. Would you say it was a coincidence? <laughs> <I might. laughs> But then I'd say Freo is probably in that seven to eleven range. Okay, like jeez, that's probably. a that's a massive range. Well, more likely. Seven to on, give us, give us okay, I'll dinner. elaborate on that. They're more likely to just miss finals than just make finals. So not sure. You, you just narrowly miss the finals. Yeah, okay, that's the reason. That's yeah. sort of why I was leading with that range. Mm. Sort of the one to eighteen range. Because the thing is, to be in that range, there's probably only one game difference between seven and eleven, like the way the league's shaped up the past True. couple of years. True. Mm. Alright, Jesse. Um, I have Fremantle, yeah, actually quite similar to you, either scraping into the eight or just missing out. I think they've yeah. underachieved for the talent they have. Um, too early, I think. Too, too early. early. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's, uh, there's like, your team's not that young, I reckon. If you put your best 20, Fremantle's best 22 on the park, it's not as raw as one might think. Um, especially if you get. Well, the you know, 22 we were playing was extremely raw. The, one yes. of the. Ra- most raw teams ever. Yeah, but you also had a lot of um, experienced players missing, like Fife, yeah. Sanderlands, and um, the Hill Brothers. Like, yeah. you know, Brad Hill won your best yeah. and fairest last year, right? Likely. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so there you go. Um, oh, and West Coast, uh, I'll say third. Um, theoretically, the Eagles should improve next year, but I know that. It... What's that? Uh, sorry, okay. Um, theoretically, the Eagles have. Improvement to come from three best 22 players that missed the grand final are going to come back, maybe not Nick Nat, but Gaff and Shepard mm. improve the side that won the grand final. But football doesn't True. really work like that. And yeah. um, I don't really have any reason for West Coast to go down, but. Um, There's more mm. reasons for West Coast to go up, like natural progression of your Willy Rioli, Liam yeah. Ryan, if he gets his personal stuff sorted, that sort of thing. I think a lot hangs on Josh Kennedy and his fitness. He's such a key to the Eagles. You can see the difference between the Eagles with Kennedy and Darling mm. and without it is massive. Undefeated, Undefeated with yeah. the pair, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that, yeah, he, he missed a fair chunk of footy this year. We still did all right. That was uh, the thing that kept the Eagles hanging in there this season was their ability to play through injuries. They actually managed to get the job done through a good system. But I will say third, um, and it will be only Pesimist. be... It's not, I think we have probably close to the best team. Like, probably, yeah, probably the best team, uh, maybe. It's not, they're in the conversation for the best, yeah. but it's whether they have the mental drive to push to go back-to-back, back. and generally, teams don't go back-to-back. Back. And teams have gotten better. Collingwood's gotten better with exactly. Beams. Richmond's gotten better with Tom Lynch. Yep. Melbourne's probably broken even with Stephen May, I guess. So they'll still be in the thick of it. Essendon have gotten... Legit top four potential now. So there's more competition for those top few spots. Mm. So I get your point. All right. Enough about the WA clubs for now. Uh, although I'm, I'm aware that in a couple of questions, we're going to go back to them. Top three. Uh, this is another question from Ozzy Palace. Uh, who do you think the top three players, will, that, um, in terms of influence, uh, who will be the top three players to, at their new clubs? So of all the high-profile players that got traded, um, I'm going to say Lockie Neal. Is in terms of influence at Brisbane, what he can he can bring, um, especially with Beams going as well. He's yeah. To... Well, that's that's. I'll go. I'll go. Neil one, Beams two, Hogan three. Beams two. That's interesting, considering the established midfield depth at Collingwood. Still, Beams. I think is that good that he will have an influence. Yeah, I don't. And I don't think Neil will play full time forward. I guess at yeah. this point. Which yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I think Beams would just about be the best mid other than side bottom. Yeah. On form at Collingwood. Yeah, on form. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not, I don't think Neil's going to drive Brisbane up the ladder. No, neither. That's not what yeah. I meant by influential. Yeah. But it just like, I guess, yeah, who will be the best recruit? Yeah. I think if what's Hogan's timeline looking like? Does he look like round one? Yeah, so far. So far, he's apparently on track to be training pre-season. Yeah. Yeah, structurally, he offers yeah, a lot. Exactly. That's You'd have... If, if, Evan Lobb, I'd probably give an honourable mention to. Mm. Especially if Hogan's not 100% early, Lobb will be... I think Dylan Shield as well. Obviously, Shield. To Bombers, I think he's a good one. But I don't think... Personally, I don't think he's as good as like Coniglio, Whitfield and Kelly in that GWS mid, I think. I if agree. GWS were going to lose one of those big names, I think he was probably the best one to lose. Yeah, I think that was basically why that happened as well. We, we, yeah. I think Coniglio and um, Kelly both are out of contract at the same time as Shill. Yeah. Um, and it probably helps that Shill, I think he's been pretty open that he wants to go play back for Victoria. But I do agree with your point that um, Kelly and Canelio are, are the two you keep out of, out of that. And you can't keep them all because they're going to go cost them a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. And Taranto's teed up as a replacement in the hips. Mm. Interesting. Uh, in the hips. The the holster, it's like <laughs> some sort of... I think it's an expression. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good re- uh, replacement in the hips. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, interesting, uh, I was reading the other day, Gold Coast. They're very tight on salary space as well, which you wouldn't necessarily expect. What? But, How? yeah, very, very tight up there. Um, who the fuck? What? Who, yeah. are, they who are they paying? Well, exact. Uh, that's that's how much they're struggling to keep players that okay. the current players. Yeah, they're paying a lot of them overs for their talent. Yeah, they have to pay ninety two point five percent of the cap as a minimum. Yeah, that's the AFL uh, players Is association. It, I thought it was nine. I've heard ninety five. Maybe it went up. I heard ninety five. Yeah, it could have gone up. Yeah, maybe it might be using old numbers. I've heard ninety five to one hundred and five okay. or. 100. Got a feeling it was ninety two point five like yeah. years ago. And that was probably yeah. the last time I looked at that. Yeah, but they yeah, mentioned yeah. it a little on Trade Radio, I think. Yeah. So I got 95. Wow, that's... Um, Boys, who was crazy. your who, your top three teams for the trade period? And your bottom team for the trade period? Bottom team's easy, Gold Coast. Top yes. three teams, I'd say Freo. Not, but even excluding my bias, Freo deserved a mention. Uh, who else? Hawthorne. Yeah, yeah, Hawks for sure, especially yeah. if Scully pans yeah. out. In terms of what they gave up, it was pretty minimal. Yeah, other than Burton, who's got promise. Burton and the first rounder. I think Port won that trade, personally. Mm. For Wingard. Yeah. The way Wingard's been performing the past couple of years. I mean, I've said it before, historically moving to a club doesn't change your form. Um, but if there's if there's a team that's going to get the best out of a player, it's Hawthorne. Yeah. Exactly. And I've... Because you only said one loser, but I've got another loser I'd like to mention as well, Geelong. I, I personally think they stuffed up big time not getting a Tim Kelly deal done. Yeah, that was actually the next question about mm. the Tim and Kelly saga. So, um, yeah, why don't you take us through your strong views well, on that? Because I think three second round is, is a bloody good offer for a guy who took pick 24 a year ago, who's 24, 25 years old, mm. who's definitely going home one way or another. Then you're going to be able to get less for him next year when he's out of contract. Take what you can get now and not have the drama and discourse of a guy in your team that doesn't want to be there. But Apparently, the, a lot of Geelong fans have gone off him completely, like in mm. forums and stuff. I all saw that his wife came out today and said that um, they didn't, they haven't had much support at Geelong, and they feel very isolated and alone there, um, which is a bit of a bit of a crack at the club from her. Mm. Um, obviously, yeah, you hope that. Like the family's in a good headspace, um, but the Eagles made the right choice. You cannot, I, exactly, you cannot, I agree with you the cannot give, you cannot give a first rounder and two second rounders for Tim Kelly. You can't. That's mm. what you give for like. That's the equivalent of two first rounders. Yeah, even yeah, almost easily. more than that. Yeah, that's the equivalent yeah. of Trelaw, of a Lockie Neal, of yeah, a yeah. Dave he's Beams. Just played one season. Yeah, uh, he, he's a good player, but yeah. it's it's a little bit blown out of proportion. And that's value. the other reason because they know Eagles know he's got, ending up at the Eagles one way or another as well, so they don't have to pay that. Hmm. Geelong is stupid asking for as much as they were asking just for another year of having the guy who doesn't want to be there. Mm. Mm. They probably he, the Eagles didn't want to. It's going to bite them in the ass. Sorry, the Eagles really didn't want to give up that 2019 first rounder. And as I just said off the air, I th- 
th- suspect there might be planning that strategically because Stephen Cornelio comes out of contract in a year. Um, so no, that's my I'd little theory that. as to why. Um, hey? I said I'd hate that. <laughs> Cornelio to go to West Coast? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Um, so who is your top three and your oh. worst team? I suppose Gold Coast Gold is Coast worst. by far and away. I will roast them after the break because okay. it's a joke up there. Um, I'll, I'll say, yeah, uh, Fremantle, Hawthorne and... Um, that third's hard to think I think Port fairly like did a good job. I don't fully agree with their strategy, which I'll uh, we'll touch on later as well. But in terms of getting value for it, um, but, you know, they, they lost Wingard, Polek, uh, Jasper, McMillan, Pittard. Um, none of them are like massively crucial. Uh, they've got Lysette, Burton and Mays in as uh, established players. And then they've got a really, really strong draft position and they probably need an influx of youth there. So I'm going to give them a pretty and big tick. to continue with that, to give them credit as well, they've set themselves up to continue their strategy come draft night. They've got mm. three picks that they can very easily use to trade up ever more, which seems to be their strategy, rightly or wrongly. But they've set themselves up well to implement that strategy, yeah. which they should get credit for. That's true. That's true. All right, before we go to a break, real quick, the last question Aussie Palace had um, was uh, the circumstances about Lockie Neal leaving, and I think it's a good question. Why, why do you think? Why do you think someone like Lockie Neal would uproot out of Fremantle to go to a? I think you Australian got to take team. him on what he said. He said he really admired the scoring power of Brisbane. Watched them quite a lot all year and thought they played mm. um, a really attractive, yeah. Good scoring type of football. Um, he admitted money's a factor, which he money's he ob- yeah obviously is a factor. There a, is there a gap, a big gap in what he's getting paid? I haven't actually seen. I don't know how big the gap is, but I know they were offering an extra year and okay, maybe an extra hundred year, maybe maybe, maybe yeah. Something is like he that. getting I offered over a million? I it was think about nine hundred. Right. I think okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what's reported and floated yeah. around. That's yeah. That's another thing that they've talked about a bit during the trade period. They need to. I'd, I'd probably agree with players' wages going public, like people knowing how much. Yeah, I agree make. as well. Was and it, it helped players negotiate. Going, this guy's getting this much. Mm. Why aren't I getting this? Like, so <laughs> the advantage. I'd help the players as well. Even yeah. though there are the obvious trade offs of like mental health, people knowing you're underperforming, sort of thing. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. 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 I don't really buy that. Every pretty much every big sport wages are made public. Yeah. I think the players could cope with it personally. Yeah. Without meaning to yeah. <laughs> sound like Um Yeah, as Thank as you. I alluded to, as I alluded to before, um I think the like single biggest loser out of this trade period is the Gold Coast Suns. I some of their moves are inexplicable to me. Last year we roasted them for trading pick two for Lucky Weller, something I think they should still kind of regret, considering what they could they could probably get him this year for what, a late first? Yep. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. A, out of contract. Um, what else? They did that horrible abomination of a trade with West Coast where they basically made two picks up and gave away four second rounders. And this year, what have they done? Why Can somebody explain to me, maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way, why they would trade Stephen May and Keller Jasney for pick six? Well, I was listening to their list manager talk about this actually and he's just pretty much resigned to the fact he's completely pressed the reset button. He's just clearing house, starting yep. from scratch. That's Gold Coast's mentality. Yeah, I think the mentality is if they're going to lose, if May's going to go, send them now during this period. Um, So like you said, they can have a reset because if they try and sort of grow next year and then May left at the end of next year, it's sort of like their house of cards falling down again. Yeah. Um, But you definitely have to question the price. Um, I mean, Kola Dajny, he's... um, He's pretty handy. He's a good player. Mm. Um, May, he's Basically got him for free. Man. May's very good. Yep. Um, the, I don't like that logic. Like, I'm sure you're right. Like, that makes sense. But I um, I don't like it. Why, why would you trade your captain? I know he wants to leave in a year. But when your club is absolutely bleeding, why wouldn't you hold on to May for a year? They traded him for less than they will get in a year. For him as a free agent, when he's a free mm-hmm. agent, he will be banned one compensation. And assuming, assuming Gold Coast don't finish like yeah. tenth or above, that they, they will probably get pick one and two next year if they if they win the spoon. Well, they yeah. If so, if they'd won the spoon in 2019, the compo they would have got was pick two. It's okay. They can let Jack Watt Martin walk next year for that pick two, Martin. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd like their less. I think their list manager has changed. So the guy who 
did their last year's deals, I think, with Scott Clayton. He's actually at West Coast now. Yeah. It was um, Neil Cameron or something. Craig Cameron, I want to say. Cameron, yeah, yeah I want to say him. But, yeah, whatever his name is, shithouse job. Why would they give away Scrimshaw for what was like a... Th- yeah, it was like Scrimshaw on a third for... A, oh, no, Scrimshaw on a fourth for a third rounder. Scrimshaw really... Uh, there's something about Scrimshaw they really didn't like. Didn't... Hardly got any games. Mm. Um, very high draft pick. Yeah, Let was. him go cheaply. Just seems like due and the coaching staff really either didn't rate him or didn't like his attitude. Or Seems like due something. had that relationship with a few players, like dropping them and not playing them and stuff yeah, like that. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't uh, know. Oh, yeah, you can't, you yeah, can't really um, judge on that. blame a coach for yeah. playing who he likes to play. But, um, but Jack Scrimshaw is a pick seven mm. that has one, once out of his first club. And I pres- I'm presuming there's no personal issues there. Has just said he wants to both play for Hawthorne, and they've basically given him to Hawthorne for free. I think uh, the problem is the precedent's already been set. Anyone can leave. Anyone that wants mm. to leave can leave. You have, you're sick of losing? Just say in two weeks, oh, I want to go back to Melbourne. And you know it'll happen. Exactly. Well, this is, for me, this Scrimshaw one, and maybe I'm looking at it like a dick, but... This was an opportunity for them to draw a line in the sand and say, hey, if you, if you want an out of our footy club, we're not going to happily let you uh, accommodate you going to the, whichever club you want for free. Yeah. We spent pick seven on you. You can go into the draft if you don't want to play for us yeah. or get traded to a team that's actually going to pay up for you. Because yeah. for Hawthorne, like, couldn't trade anything. Yeah. They got yeah. absolutely no currency there. Um, which is another interesting one. I think they, they've traded out basically all their picks this year, but... They've kept their 2009 first round, uh, 2019 first rounder. It could be another potential player for someone like Cornelio or Josh Kelly when they. Uh, yeah. And they did. They got Scully for 56, was it? Yeah. Uh, no, it was even later. It was a future fourth. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, about 60. So Tom Scully's going for the same price as Travis Collier, is what you're telling. Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. going hard. They're going hard. Uh, mm. Hawks. They are. They they're trying to stay in it. Yeah. Uh, Wingard Scully. And um, the one the one thing that's good about all their inclusions is they've got time on their side. Scully's Mm. still only, what, 26, 27, something like that. Yeah, he's the same Um, age as five. Wingard, probably 25, 26. Yeah, might Um, even be 24. O'Meara. Wingard's our age. O'Meara Mitchell are sort of around that age as well. They've got got plenty of time on their side. And like I said before, I think if any club can bring the best out of players, it's Hawthorne. It's Hawthorne. It's just ridiculous how they get these players to fall in their lap. They it's, are a destination club. Yeah, Some people say Clarko. it doesn't exist, but they're definitely yeah. the number one for me. Clarko is a big draw. Yeah, definitely. It really is. Like you said, like they can. It's not just the success. It's that Clarkson can get the best out of players. It yeah. seems. Yeah. Um, but it's it, just it's, a mental thing at the club. Yeah. I swear. You Getting go there and the players too. are just. Yeah. They're on it, but the club is ruthless itself, which I think yeah. probably breeds that. Mm. If you if you're not pulling your weight at Hawks, you you'll be going. We saw even if you um, are pulling your tongue, weight. Jure, yeah. Ryan Burton, all those guys have one semi quiet season and they're gone. Sam Mitchell um, reaches thirty, yeah, and he's gone. Lewis was probably 28, yeah. 29, but I think they could see he definitely slowed up big time. Mm. Gone. I mean, there was even some talk earlier this year of Jordan Ruffhead being shown the door, with, and he's a club legend. Jared Ruffhead. Ah, uh, Jared. Sorry. <laughs> Um, Jordan Ruffett has been shown the door, I think. Yeah, yeah he's, he's at Collingwood now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was something I was going to ask you, actually, but I'm genuinely curious about. Did the Eagles get anything in return for Mitchell going back to Hawthorne? Because I knew that was no. a bit of a... I That's, thought, there's no mechanism to compensate it. I thought there was a that. thing because he no. left middle contract. The only thing the Eagles could do is take him to court for breach of contract and they're not going to do that. No. Yeah. I don't think it's... Uh, no. I don't... Yeah. Coaches, I'm not sure if I'd like that to happen well, yeah compensation no, no. I, don't, I don't see how that would work yeah you get pick 50 <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily mean draft compensation I meant maybe yeah, 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 Ross Lyon would yeah, definitely go not. for a top 5 <laughs> in compo he's yeah. a first band coach <laughs> first what first band coach <laughs> <laughs> I'd flip him for a four, fifth round pick I reckon <laughs> <laughs> Reese um. Palmer <laughs> for Ross Lyon um yeah, so Gold Coast have loaded up with a few spuds. <laughs> no, nah, spuds is harsh. I, I put it um, 
diplomatically. They've got a few like underappreciated fringe players at other clubs. Corey Ellis and Anthony Miles from Richmond. Miles is um, a good player, I yeah. think, to be fair. Yeah. He was apparently easily the best VFL player this year. Mm. Um, he d- has had some really good games for Richmond. I remember when he first came from GWS, he was a really popular player at Richmond. So I think he's actually a good pickup. But yeah, uh, Ellis... Uh, Hall and Smith. Hall and Hall and nearly won the VFL Cope medal thing, didn't he? What's the medal for best in the VFL? Liston? Or is that no? That's Collingwood. Yeah, not Copeland. Sure no, sure. Copeland's Collingwood. Co- Liston, Liston. Might be VFL, I think it's yeah. JJ Liston or something. So I think Hall and Smith was real close to that. He nearly won that. He torn mm. the VFL up this season, apparently. Yeah. It's is just, it interesting? Just on a side note, that the guys we talked about. I guess it's just because we're from this side of the country, but like um, Mitch Grigg wins the McGarry medal, Jai Bolton wins the Sandover, and uh, none of them got picked up uh, as yet in, in the that Carlton Gold Coast in the Carlton Gold Coast concessions, and they picked yeah. up a lot of fringe, not fringe, sorry, um, like like Sh- uh, Shane McAdams, a small forward, um, uh, Adelaide picked up, um, and then they picked up. Nathan I wonder Kruger. if Freo. I wouldn't honestly wouldn't be surprised if Freo. if in the rookie draft, if Mitch Grigg is there, mm. if we picked him up to yeah. fill that. Neil Void. His Marlon Pickett as well from uh, South yeah. Fremantle was another player that they're linking with an AFL berth. So Sam um, Collins was taken with one of those concession picks yeah, from Gold yeah. Coast. That's true. I'm happy to see him get another crack Me at too. AFL, Sam Collins. Me too. He's a good player. Yeah. I think Gary Lyon was on to... I think it was Gary Lyon that said that this could be the worst AFL side anyone's ever compiled next year for Gold Coast. Yeah. Hard to argue with. It's the AFL... Uh, I mean, the AFL is... Mm. Mm. Last chance to have their darling yeah. in Gold Coast. You know what's really interesting though? Gold Coast have only won the spoon in their first year. And they've owned they've won less spoons than Shows GWS. how bad Carlton are. True, yeah. <laughs> they've just somehow managed to avoid the spoon every year. Not that that's much to hang your hat they on. They did but. have a good they did have a semi good mid for like a while. Yeah. When they had sort of Gary Abler, Aaron Hole. Dion Lions, Prestia. Prestia, mm. Swallow, like it's Aaron not, another player it's they not just great, gave away for free. <laughs> Yeah, although from everything I've heard, mm. they, they were very keen to push him out the door. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of Aaron Hall, um, what do you think of North? North, I think every, everything I've seen has been giving them an A, mm. but I'm I'm not as sure. Mm. I don't. I'm not sure if I rate their 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 incomings ability. To impact a game, yeah. I don't think Dom Tyson, Jared Pollock, and Aaron Hall. I don't think they're game breakers. I don't think they're the pl- sort of players that North particularly needed personally. I think, I think North were hanging their hat on getting Gaff. That's the thing. I think the the air around Gaff, everyone sort of thought it was a done deal, and there was a like a really positive perception. Wow, North are actually starting to land some players, and now that they, they don't have Gaff, if if you look at the like the broad picture of their recruits, it's, yeah, it's pretty average. Well, yeah, it's, maybe that's harsh. It's decent. Like they've obviously it's okay. they've yeah. identified a need for outside run. Yeah. It kind of has that vibe of Port last year, loading up with Motlop and Watson, that like that. Yeah, and, uh, I'd say Pollock is probably like not a bad player at all. No, he's he's, he's okay. He's a good B plus um, outside I think mid. But Dom Tyson again, he's okay. He's yeah, probably the most vanilla player I've ever seen. Yeah. That's not a crack at him. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, just yeah. the sort of guy he is, like a slow yeah. inside outside mid. Sure. Um. Aaron Hall, we know he can be good, but the gap between his good and his bad... I think Millen Pittard is another one they got. Yeah, I mean, Pittard... Why? <laughs> Andy off half-back. I yeah, mean, he's the, all right, the Pittard yeah. one for me sort of um, really stinks of uh, we want more from Port. <laughs> uh, so they just kind of did it to get the deal done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't good. think Pittard's in their best 22, North Melbourne. No. no he no, wasn't in Ports because Darcy Burn jones had pushed him out among other guys. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, yeah, it's interesting with North with their game plan is obviously to to be Hawthorne like and ruthlessly go for these top targets, trying to um, consolidate their they don't they don't want to bottom out. Probably don't have the off field situation where they can bottom out. Yeah. But they've got to make finals now. Yeah. They, you know they're loading up for the here and now. They can't finish ninth again or whatever it was. Everyone gave them a big tick for this year, and that's fair enough. That's probably fair. They came bottom four last year, but the team is mature. There's not yeah. that many like, young guns coming. There's a few, but not that much. Um, no disrespect. I respect what they're doing. I think they're going about it the right way, but I'm just saying the pressure's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, North struggling a bit. St Kilda struggling a bit. Yes. 
I think to expect anything out of Hanbury is probably being quite optimistic. Mm. They only gave up um, pick thirty nine though. Yeah. Or Tom Hickey basically. Yeah. Um, I think it might be off se- off field the the value that Hanbury brings so the ex- an experienced leader um, from a good culture. As no, well. that that's true. That's true, and he does bring that. Mm. Um, I think Sydney did well getting rid of um, Gary Rowan. Got, they got rid of a couple of players, didn't they? Um, maybe yeah. maybe the buddy um, back ended contract is starting to pinch. I'm not too sure. Yeah, they did re also, also re sign Jake Lloyd on a massive deal. Yeah, reportedly. he's very good, Jake Lloyd. Yeah. to be fair. Yeah, um, I love Jakey Lloyd. Yeah, you texting? Oh yeah, I got a message. In I had to apply podcast. to him. Joe Rogan <laughs> yes. does it. If it's good enough for Joe Rogan, he's on Discord, Matt. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Um, one interesting tactic um, that I found in this draft was um, we were talking about this a little bit, Bushel, was the the way that South Australia have really traded up the draft order. There's a lot of top end South Australian talent in this draft. You've got Isaac Rankin. Um, he's a bit. He's kind of like the new Chad Wingard, the Chad uh, of his he's draft gun. class. Yeah, absolutely. I'm calling gun. it early. Yeah. Um, kind of Rosie, Jackson Hately. I think Tom Sparrow is another one. Um, Sam Sturt and Jez McLennan are all potentially all top 20 South Australian players. You've forgotten the best pick. Jack Lacocious. I did forget to write down Lacocious, yeah. But I'll say he's the pick of the bunch, mate. And you forgot yes, him. yeah. Well, Arguably pick of the Port bunch. Port Adelaide have pick, what, pick five. Uh, Gold Coast have pick two, three, and six. Um, Adelaide, eight, and 13. Yeah. Uh, the They've both got hands to trade up with both South yeah. Australian teams. If it was any other club, I'd be... Telling Gold Coast to swap that pick for like good mature players, but oh, it almost feels like there's no point because that player will just leave in two years. <laughs> Wait, sorry, no, wouldn't you want Gold Coast to trade pick two for a player? Yeah, yeah, as opposed to drafting Lukosius though, and he might just leave in two years. Yeah, but yeah. I think um, Port or Adelaide would be so desperate you could mm. really get something very, very good out of either of those teams yeah, in see, terms see. of mature players. Yeah, yeah. If you were Gold Coast, mm. but yeah, I feel like if you sign up to a four-year like deal, though. if they get, let's say, Gold Coast swap pick two for Matt Crouch, I feel like in two years he'd say, "Oh, I want to go back to Adelaide." <laughs> Uh, like no, I would do that if you could get him on a four or five year deal. Yeah. Back yourself well, in to turn, turn the culture around in that time. Um, uh, yeah. It's not going to. The players have the power as well. They're like, no, I've stuffed that. I'm not going to Gold Coast. I find this. Um, I'd rather go to Sturt. That's probably th- what some of these South Australian fans would be thinking. <laughs> um, I find this tactic a little strange from South Australia. Where uh, Sorry, for the South Australian club trading up to get these players, though. Do? In the draft. I do find it strange. Why, what's the benefit of them being South Australian? They're locked in They'll for their career. Yeah. They just, Port just lost two South Australian players to money. Uh-huh. There's still a high chance of keeping them. Why wouldn't you, the way I see it, I would almost rather Gold Coast draft Lukosius so and you Isaac Rankin, them. get them in two years for a massive discount. The Port GM pretty much came out and said that's what he's planning on doing with yeah. this manager. And a lot of people have cried foul saying that's draft tampering, but I don't think it's draft tampering to just nah, speak yeah, a reality. Uh, yeah, they're not really threatening Gold Coast. He's just saying, yeah, we'd back ourselves in to get them in two years' time. Yeah. Speaking of people um, coming out with um, big big statements, I'd like to have a bit of a crack at. I think Mark Robinson um, wrote a piece suggesting Peter Bell and Fremantle had uh, conjured up the beams to Collingwood um, rumor <laughs> as like a is he the I don't guy know, from, some from, sort of he's some, a guy from three sixty right yeah, yeah, yeah as okay. some sort of like I think he's a head editor at. Herald Some sort of well. jealous, like, I don't know. Yeah, you're poaching Neil from us, so we're going to make a rumour up that Beams is going to Collingwood. <laughs> he does go to Collingwood, and then yeah. there's no ramifications yeah. or anything. I mean, yeah. there shouldn't be ramifications, but fuck. It helped you get he just talk some guess, absolute but. shit. Yeah, dude, he... Like, Did I you don't, see that? Brisbane no, ended up getting in a position where they didn't need to do that Beams trade, to be fair, for the Neil one. They did that other deal where they got pick 19 from Gold Coast. They right. didn't need to involve Beams to get the Neil deal across the line in the end. No, he wasn't saying that, though. I th- he was saying that Fremantle... Um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm just yeah. saying in general that oh, it wasn't yeah. ever necessary to get the Neil deal done. Yeah. Because Brisbane got that second first rounder without having to trade Beams, but they yeah. did anyway. He, he's a strange dude, Robbo. I don't dislike him. This is weird. No, I don't dislike him either. Yeah. My favourite thing is when he... Um, 
He's no Robert Walls. In his finals preview tipping, he tipped uh, Melbourne to win the flag and Gorn play oh, the finals. Right. And then on the next page for these weekly tips, he tipped Geelong to beat Melbourne in the first yeah. week. <laughs> it's just, just classy, Robo. But. That's uh, quite smart, actually, covering all bases. Yeah, yeah, technically <laughs> he can't be right. Well, no, he, he's always right. He can be wrong, but he's always right. Yeah. Um, a little bit on Brisbane. Um, do you guys think they're going to be a better team next year? Because I think ta- I, think, I think losing Beams is a massive hit. I think it Beams is. is just as big, if not bigger, than getting Neil. Mm. That kind um, of cancelled each other. Yeah, out. So yeah. Those yeah. balance out. But I mean, Neil progression. is younger. Yes. Yeah. And they did take a pr- fairly good deal for Beams as well. To be sure. fair. True. Uh, but yeah, I'm I mean, just thinking short term. In, in terms of immediate impact, no, I don't think it'll have a difference. And I don't think yeah. Neil's the sort of player to come in and mm. suddenly change a football club like sure. that. He's more of a. Uh, I, I can't. Know. I really wanted to see how their midfield would go with Beams, Neil, and yeah. Denzel. Would have been a good midfield. Yeah. It would have been. Yeah. I think with Neil, that like Beams gone Neil in, that'll help them tread water while they get that natural progression from guys like Barry, Rayner. Sure. Sure. I do like Brisbane. McClellan I think. Too, um, yeah. I think they're heading in the right direction. Yeah, generally, I do, too. I do too. I don't think they're yeah. by no means they're um, a basket case. No, no. I guess I was thinking that a lot of people pegged him as a big improver, whereas I uh, this year I think that Beams mm, deal was yeah. going to halt him a little bit. Yeah, but it'll be okay. They'll, they'll tread water. They'll maintain that like yeah, t- it, ten to like thirteen range. It is yeah. a bit strange for me that uh, this is me having a crack at Brisbane. That but sort of Neil was so attracted to go to Brisbane for their game style scoring power, even though Frio won twice as many games mm. with. Bigger injuries to bigger players. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the deal is there. It's almost like, yeah, there's probably something else behind the scenes. There could be so many, so I'm many still different like, Even though everyone's publicly defended Ross, I'm still dubious at this point with Ross. I, I think. No, I'm not. I'll, I'm, early, like this, like about halfway through the season that's just gone, I was prepared to give him 2019. By the end of it, I'm a bit more like, no, nah, I've mean, gone off him a bit more. But Neil, Neil said that he gets on super with Ross. They. They caught, they're going to catch up in the next few days. Oh, Hogan really? said that Ross sold him, sold him on Fremantle. Um, there's just as much evidence that yeah. he's a good coach and a good bloke as there is that he's a bad bloke. Yeah, I'm still dubious with him at this point, especially with his strat. Like even on field, he's at times his plan seems a bit prehistoric. Yeah, but I mean that's a bit different. I can understand if you're not happy with his game plan. It's a combination. But of for, I think for people dubious. to say that. Um, someone leaves a club because of him. I don't think there's any evidence at all to say that personally. It's probably something you would never get evidence exactly. for. But I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm still, by doing this, I'm not saying throw him out the door and make him a hobo or nothing, <laughs> but I'm saying I'm just a bit, I thought that's yeah. exactly what yeah. you said. <laughs> Come on, let's do that. <laughs> well, I'm sort of like, uh, I'm pretty done with him. I'd you're over painful. it. You're ready for a new I'm head ready coach? For a fresh fresh, air, fresh yeah. start? Yeah. Okay. Someone I can with understand a different that. Perspective, someone yeah. that can sell a vision to the players, that, hmm. like not that they're not buying it. Maybe they're buying in the Rosses. Maybe they're not. But a new vision, breath fresh air. And I don't think Peter Bell is probably on the same page with Ross either. I think he's a great acquisition, yeah, Peter, Peter Bell. I think this draft period really, he stood very firm. And I think, especially mid draft, when everyone was really having a crack at him, having a crack yeah. at Freire, he stood firm and. I think it worked out. He's actually another reason I could put up, like I can withstand Ross a while longer because I feel he'll balance Ross out a bit, and like he won't put up with mm. Ross's shit. Like, cause there's that. It's a rumor, admittedly, that Ross was the behind the Benell and Ballantyne re-signings, and Brad. That's what. Yeah. There's a the rumor that that's what drove Brad Lloyd away, but that's it is rumors very, and conjecture, obviously. Yeah, it is very, very. It's strange that Rossich would act. As list manager, and during that period, they would just re sign two players before they'd even got a new list manager on board. You'd think they'd just yeah. keep those players where they are mm. and then sign a new list manager and then get them to sort it out. Yeah, but that's where I, why I like Bell because he seems to have a different perspective than the current one we had, so he'll sort of bring a bit of balance to it. Just seems a bit like process. a no bullshit sort of guy, exactly. if firm but fair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he really, uh, he really copped it for that feather in the cap comment. Yeah. <laughs> totally blown out of proportion. He's yeah. got two now, like, to be fair. He's lost one, but he's got two. What's that? Feathers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, All right, is there anything else? No, I think we covered it. We didn't really talk about absolutely every trade, but no. I don't think it's really necessary. Do we yeah. think Shield makes Essendon much better? Yeah, I think he makes him a bit better. Yeah, yeah. I think he makes him a bit better. Got like good a, depth. A lot of people say him top four. Are you quiet on that page or not? 
quite. No, I, I'm not quite. I've been, I've been pegging them as a big improver for years, and then it just never yeah. happens. It'll happen in one day. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say top eight. Yeah, yeah I'd give. I'd definitely give them top eight and say I think they're an honourable. I'll say they're better than top four. I think they'll be about seventh, eight. Yeah, I think they're an honourable mention for the four, but definitely make the eight. Cool. Yeah. All right, boys. It's been a good one. Yeah. We'll be back hopefully in a few weeks. Uh, get into our draft content. Sounds good. About the draft and stuff, which is uh, arguably the best time of the year. Yeah, so. I know you. I know you love uh, <laughs> draft day. Yeah, which is, I'm quite glad the Eagles didn't trade their picks, so now I can get around it. So you're a bit more invested. That's it. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for everyone who's tuned in. Um, as we said, get around the Discord. I'll have a link in the uh, description and the top comment and uh, join the community. Cheers. See you later. Leroy Jenkins. If anybody gets that reference.